aside from the incredible amount of deaths during the communist dictatorship in the Soviet Union, an often overlooked key aspect of Soviet policy was the war against religion, the persecution of priests and bishops, the closing, if not destroying, of churches, and the curricula in school emphasizing militant atheism. Indoctrinating the population and removing any unwanted religious affiliation meant that propaganda was used in a way the Nazis were starting to master around the same time. This curiosity is exemplified in Bashin Luke or Bajin Meadow, a communist propaganda film that was produced between 1935 and 1937 by Sergei Eisenstein. The film is loosely based on a story that became famous in the Soviet Union in 1932, when Pavlik Morozov became a martyr at the age of 13, killed by his family for reporting his father, a kulak, a wealthy farmer, to the authorities. The film was supposed to be a tale about morality, where the protagonist, Stepok, had done the right thing by prioritizing state interests over those of family. What makes this film interesting is that the project was never finished and never released. It was later discovered the film was rich in iconography with an underlying religious theme. You see, as Eisenstein progressed with his film, he lost sight of his original goal. Instead of portraying the Bolshevist notion of class struggle against the backdrop of collectivization, Eisenstein had started to generalize the theme of the film to a point where it became unacceptable in the eyes of the communist government. Eisenstein fell from grace in a dangerous period where many artists, poets and writers were rounded up and executed. The film was lost due to a German bombardment in the Second World War. Yet, in the 1960s, parts of the original film reels were rediscovered. Apparently, Eisenstein thought it worthwhile to preserve these originals. These shots reveal Eisenstein's genius. Ambiguous religious symbolism is a core element in the film. Peasants ravish, plunder and desecrate the church in the village with the aim of establishing a center for the community. During an act that can only be described as sacrilegious, suddenly it seems that the peasants are seized by a divine ecstasy. They are portrayed as prophets, apostles and representations of Mary. A young boy is crowned king, purporting the personification of Jesus Christ. The peasants gather around the boy in a scene that can be interpreted as the peasants worshipping the newly crowned king. The angle in which a woman is filmed clearly paints her as a Madonna, the Mother Mary. What did these peasants want to destroy? The religion or merely its frills? Perhaps these peasants simply returned to the most elementary, basic form of Christianity. Did this divine ecstasy seizing the peasants represent Christianity or something akin to heathenism? The peasants are distorted into biblical, prophetic figures, but is the symbolism sincere or ridicule? The film cuts to the young communist pioneers having to defend the collective farm grain during the night. Stepak's father has escaped from his guards and without a build-up, he shoots Stepak, who stands on the lookout. The film ends, or rather, there are no more film reels from the point after Stepak is murdered by his father and a funeral march is held. Stepak is carried by a Soviet official, accompanied by children, members of the Young Pioneers Communist Organization, all that awaits him is martyrdom. Shumyatsky, head of the principal directorate for cinema, ordered a halt to the production of the film in 1937, publicly taking the blame for the film project. He was arrested during the Great Purge in 1938, charged with collaboration with saboteurs and executed shortly thereafter. This reveals another fascinating underlying theme of the film that translates to Soviet society as a whole. Stepok is portrayed as a hero for opposing his father, who is sabotaging the town's harvest. The story of Pavlik Morozov, the boy Stepok was based on, was used by Soviet propaganda in order to indoctrinate the youth and create a climate where children would turn in their parents 
the class struggle, as far as that is something the Soviet Union could still be associated with at that point, was paramount to any personal ties, including one's own family. An ideology that shapes a climate where children will tell on their parents because they favor an anonymous institution such as the state, juxtaposed with countries based on core liberal elements, shapes a fascinating contrast. Perhaps it allows for entertaining the thought that it is otherworldly to even come close to imagining what it is like growing up in a dystopian society. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed it, then please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I upload a new video every Friday, and next week we're going to delve into the democratic system of ancient Athens. So, hopefully until then.